Hi Taurus, Rosemary from Rosemary Astrology and welcome to your June 2023 astrology. So the good news is Mercury is out of post retrograde shadow on the 31st of May so that you know going around and around on a loop with uh, first house matters whatever is connected to your appearance how others see you you know your uh, public profile your online profile that is over that back and forth things getting uh, hampered uh, you perhaps even changing your mind that has come to an end and of course a Jupiter's blessings and benefits and opportunities can now come in unhindered Mercury although he is small is mighty he is the trickster of the zodiac so Jupiter of course is the biggest planet in our solar system uh, Jupiter was the god of gods in Roman mythology and I do have a whole video on Jupiter's one year stay in Taurus for each sign but you know Mercury was still mixing things up so whatever was happening wasn't completely set or whatever came in with Jupiter wasn't you know completely set or defined as Mercury has a way of making things uh, go backwards or get changed up before going forward again now briefly um jupiter of course will spend one year in your sign so tremendous benefits for you the start of a new 12-year cycle very fortunate to have jupiter transiting our sign can also be a year where people will come to you to help you and assist you and provide you with those opportunities and before i forget um i am a taurus sun my communication skills were so hampered by the mercury retrograde i really really felt it so if that has been your case if you're a taurus sun or rising let me know please tell me it wasn't just me that is you know one thing i noticed is some mercury retrogrades aren't as hard and some hit harder than others and this one was really quite challenging so by the 11th of june mercury has moved into your second house of wealth and income the house associated with your sign and is joining the sun that has been there since the 20th of may so this uh focus um is on your wealth saving money making more money as you perhaps communicating about that you know discussing this with people uh, discussing opportunities or if thinking about that maybe you are looking up different options in terms of as i said making more money or even saving more money maybe you're looking at um, investment options or, or certain um, long-term savings options now the other thing that is going on try to stick to the start of the month and do this in order i'm still filming this while mercury is in shadow and i'm still challenged so bear with me a full moon at the start of the month on the third and sagittarius in your eighth house this is wealth we benefit from through others so everything from a mortgage a grant of some sort to our partner's money or uh, through a business partner someone who finances us this is also inheritances this is also a debt as you know we contract debt by getting put this as simply as I can by getting money from other people right from like taking out a loan for example or a mortgage now full moons always make us more emotional so from the I'd say first to the fifth maybe even a bit before the 31st to the sixth don't let yourself get triggered emotions always run higher for everybody during the full moon and remember full moons bring a closure sometimes they also reveal things so maybe you know something will be revealed in terms of debt or financing through someone else maybe something is coming to an end in that area as well this of course is you know a sun moon opposition so this is you know your stuff your wealth and other people's uh money and other people's wealth and you know an opposition is always a question of finding balance so you know that could be between perhaps how much money you're putting into something and how much money someone else is putting into something the other big news this month is venus will be retrograde in leo and the shadow period starts on the 19th of june retrograde itself is from the 22nd of july to the 3rd of september and venus will be out of post retrograde shadow on the 7th of october by the 8th she will move into your fifth house in virgo so that is four months in one sign that's an unusually long time now generally before i talk about a specifically for you generally venus retrograde the classic is ex-lovers coming back from the past but it can be also other relationships you know venus governs very much our relationships especially our one-on-one -on -one relationships as the ruler of libra where's libra 
as the ruler of Libra associated with the seventh house of partnerships. Remember, Venus is also your ruling planet. So while she is retrograde, you know, we can feel a bit of diminished energy because this is, you know, the planet that rules over our sign as well. And things tend to slow down in general with any planet retrograde because the planet, of course, is going backwards, isn't uh, moving as fast, but more specifically for Taurus and for Libra because Venus also rules Libra. So yes, people coming back from the past. The other thing we associate with Venus retrograde or we warn about is, you know, Venus does relate to beauty as well. So no drastic or dramatic changes to wardrobe. Uh, Venus relates to money, remember, also. So Venus can have you wanting to spend money on, you know, changing your wardrobe, changing, getting a whole new line of makeup, you know, dramatically changing your makeup routine, um, changing your appearance with some sort of cosmetic procedure, you know, completely changing your hair. And because of the retrograde energy, it seems the focus is even more on that because Venus keeps going over, you know, that, that same area. But that is really not the time we advise to do that because then Venus goes forward again. And like all retrogrades, things get changed up. So what we thought was a really great idea or something that we really wanted to do in terms of beauty turns out to not be not be that great. And do remember, you know, the 19th of June to the 7th of October, that includes the shadow period. So try to avoid doing those things, even if you are tempted, Taurus, especially as Venus is your ruler. Now, this will be in your fourth house of home and family. This is also, um, you know, the physical place you live. The fourth house is, uh, you know, our flat, our apartment, our house. It is real estate. It is um, our region, you know, our, our country. It is family of origin, family of choice. This is also the most private part of our chart, you know, where people just very are close to us or um, that we're on very intimate terms with get to see us. This is the lowest part of our chart. So Venus could have you again. Um, this could bring back family members from, I'll say from the past, or, you know, someone that you haven't seen in a long time, perhaps um, uh, that a relationship cooled with that were somewhat estranged. That's a possibility. There might be an urge, you know, Venus on the fourth house wants us to spend money on luxury items, uh, likely for your home. So you might be thinking about doing something in that aspect. And again, you know, Venus arrives on the 5th of June. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. See, still hampered by the Mercury retrograde. But Venus arrives on the 5th of June and isn't in shadow until the 19th. So, you know, something might come up, uh, something, you know, a purchase you want to make, a change you want to make. And, you know, I would say Venus isn't even in shadow. You know, if you want to go with that, that would probably be a good idea. But the minute she starts to go into shadow, whatever you decide to spend money on for your home will probably come up for review again as Venus backtracks and then goes forward again. You know, Venus in the fourth house is also very harmonious um, times with family members, you know, in terms of relationships with family members. But again, with the retrograde, you know, if someone does come back, uh, a family member that does appear again, they can leave again or they, they can stay. But there's that idea of a cycle being on a loop with a retrograde. And remember, Mars arrived there towards the end of May and will be there all of June. So, you know, you've had this dynamic, forceful energy before Venus arrived, very much um, focused on a goal. Maybe there was something you wanted to do with your house, you know, uh, redecorating, redesigning. Mars is pushing you to do that. Mars in the fourth house can also be a move as well. And I cautioned, always the caution I give with Mars, regardless of where he is in the chart, Mars can be abrasive. You know, he's so dynamic and focused, sometimes impulsive as well. You know, this could have led to arguments or some confrontations with family members as well. Now, these two will not be conjunct. Um, I work with, you know, very close degrees for a conjunction, but there will be, you know, the feeling of the energy sort of uh, blending together a bit or, you know, try not to be one or the other. <laughs> Don't you know, sort of Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde thing going. But if there have been confrontations, Venus will definitely smooth that over. Venus much more receptive and harmonious. It takes everyone into account and others want to um, come into relation with us with Venus energy. But just do know on the downside, Venus will be going back and forth. So nothing again is set. You know, as I said, people who come in might go out again. 
and anything you know beauty in terms of the physical place you live is to be um well thought out or at least uh, wait until the retrograde cycle is completely over at the start of october having said all that venus will oppose pluto on the 6th and the 7th so venus just arriving in leo and pluto just about to move back into capricorn this is you know definitely a power struggle of some sort venus again our relationships this time in terms of family uh, Pluto all about power and control, you know, showing us the shadow side, uh, hence the death and rebirth aspect of Pluto. We want to uh, change things or transform things once we've seen what isn't working. This can also be the classic area of success. This is where we strive for success. This is a very um, above the horizon, a more public house. It's success in a, a public way or a status way that others can see. It doesn't have to be career, but it does have... Um, that public aspect to it. This is very much the most private part of our chart, the highest part of our chart, the lowest, most intimate private part of our chart, the uh, the NC, the Midhaven, and the IC, the Imum Coeli. Little bit of trivia there for you. <laughs> but this is the classic confrontation between, you know, home responsibilities, family responsibilities, and where we are striving to seek success in the public sphere. Then after that, Venus, busy, busy Venus, will square Jupiter in your sign. And square is an aspect of tension, but between the most beneficial planet in astrology and the second most beneficial planet in astrology, this actually works quite well. Again, you, your appearance, how others see you, you know, your, your, your uniqueness, your personality, your vitality, and uh, your outward self, as much as the 12th houses are our inner self and again, you know, home and family. So opportunities there, uh, benefits there, a lot of, you know, wonderful potential there. The only issue again, you know, this is before Venus is in shadow, so she is full strength, but Venus so receptive sometimes, um, so passive and of course, you know, Jupiter bringing in opportunities, but Jupiter is um, in, astro in astrology and astronomy a big ball of gas. The, the danger of Jupiter is that we don't seize these opportunities. So they sort of blow over, you know, like a, a balloon or a lot of, you know, a hot air balloon, you know, things just sort of flit over and we don't use whatever Jupiter is, is bringing in. And could it be from um, a family member or through a family member because of this square possibly? And Venus, you know, being so uh, diplomatic and cooperative and passive, you know, that the downside of that combined energy is we just let something go by, you know, we just don't seize on it. This is definitely, though, um, a pleasure square, right? You might be really, really focused on just good times with family, you know, warm, uh, intimate, loving moments with family as well. And again, that is from the 8th to the 15th. Now we were speaking about Jupiter. Jupiter is going to sextile Saturn, and that is going to be from the 19th to the 23rd, but already that energy is building on the 9th at the start of the month and will last into the start of July because Saturn is slowing down to go retrograde on the 17th, so he's not moving at his usual speed. This works very well together. They are um, almost opposite in energy. You know, Jupiter all benefits things almost falling into our lap, coming in quite easily. Saturn, the taskmaster, very detailed, very structured. But this is, again, opportunities coming in, solutions, uh, benefits. And this is the work and the attention to detail and the grounding it on the physical plane to make it happen. So first house, 11th house, could this be, you know, this is hopes and wishes. We say long-term goals sometimes. This is also our social circle. So groups of friends, you know, a team we belong to, an organization we belong to, even if it's online, perhaps you're part of an online community. And, you know, can this be benefits coming through someone in a group, perhaps, or perhaps, um, you know, some beneficial uh, energy or some beneficial opportunities coming in and the group helping you to create that or structure that, you know, or maybe a long term goal that Saturn is going to help structure and then Jupiter is going to bring even more opportunities and solutions in for you all possibilities but do use that energy also very well because 
they do, as I said, work nice together. It is, you know, sometimes we can have a lot of ideas and inspiration to do something, but then we have to take those things sort of out of our heads, so to speak. And I, I say this as someone who um, likes to write and who also paints. Um, I really, really enjoy painting. You know, you can have a lot of ideas, but until you do something with them, there's nothing that's really happening. So, you know, I do encourage you to use that energy very well also. And just briefly before I go, I said Saturn has begun to retrograde. He will not leave your 11th house, but will go back to the very start and recover the ground since he arrived in March. So whatever, um, if you watched my video of Saturn and Pisces and Saturn spends three years, two and a half, a little bit more than two and a half, almost three years in each sign, Saturn will bring structure to the group. You know, that has been very blurry with Neptune, but Saturn will set up boundaries. If you felt, you know, your social circle has been overstepping their boundaries, Taurus, Saturn is going to remedy all that. Neptune will, is much closer to the end of Pisces, will retrograde starting on the 30th of June. Pluto, as I said, will move back into your ninth house, and that will be on the 11th of June. So Pluto is going to do this again in the fall of 2024. He is um, going to come out of retrograde in October of 2023, but stay in your ninth house in Capricorn until the end of the year. He's going to go back into Aquarius in the fall. He's going to retrograde back into Capricorn, come back into Aquarius. So You've heard me say this before, this, you know, uh, 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 back and forth. And, you know, wrapping up again, this is another stay, perhaps wrapping up ninth house matters, publishing, medicine, legal matters, uh, whatever is foreign to us, so long distance travel, uh, going very far away or going away for a long time. You know, this is um, higher education, learning. I call it uh, just mind expansion, right? It is learning in terms of metaphysical or philosophical, I have trouble saying that, philosophical pursuits. So whatever helps us broaden our horizons and grow. So, you know, this was a 16 year transit in Capricorn, whatever transformative energy has been going on there, Pluto is gonna check in again and make another attempt to wrap things up. And of course, by the end of the month, these two planets will be retrograde as well and Venus in her pre-retrograde shadow. So we have quite a few planets going retrograde. So lovely, Taurus. That is everything I wanted to tell you. Thank you again so much for joining me for the astrology. I really appreciate it. And don't forget to like if you liked, subscribe, share this with someone you think might find it interesting, and drop me a comment, especially about the Mercury retrograde. Let me know how that went for you. Take care, Taurus. Have a wonderful month, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.